Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello, thank you for joining me. Another science podcast. How a black hole kills a galaxy. I found this article is pretty cool from IFL Science, which used to be I fucking love science, but they had to change it. I get it. I will put the link in the description when I publish the video podcast. Is there a name here? I didn't see one before. Hmm. I like giving credit to people. Oh, wait. All right. This is called How a Supermassive Black Hole Can Kill Its Galaxy. By Stefan Luntz. Despite the vast numbers of galaxies we can study, astronomers have struggled to make sense of their evolution. In particular, there is a question of what causes some galaxies to die, causing star formation, but the galactic structure and black hole size may provide an answer. Long after astronomers consider a galaxy dead, its stars will go on shining and may, for all we know, host intelligent beings. However, the brightest and bluest stars have the shortest lives. Consequently, fairly soon after star formation ceases, a galaxy will be composed entirely of fainter and more reddish stars, like some boring bar all the hip young things have left. The process where new stars cease to be formed is called quenching. Astronomers have puzzled over why it initiates in some galaxies much quicker than others. Encounters with smaller galaxies can help keep a galaxy alive. We know, but most life comes from gas falling from, from the galactic halo onto disks where it condenses into stars. A paper in the Astrophysical Journal proposes a reason why this, is often, this often ceases long before the gas has run out. Galaxies with larger supermassive black holes appear to quench earlier. This is not because a black hole consumes all the gas, leaving nothing left to form stars. Even the hungriest black holes don't do that for large galaxies. Instead, a popular theory proposes black holes release energy as they feed. And those that do this rapidly enough emit so much heat, the halo gas becomes too hot to collapse into disks, or onto the disk. Hmm. The idea is that star-forming galaxies, the central black hole, is like a parasite that ultimately grows and kills the host, Professor Sandra Faber of the University of California, Santa Cruz, said in a statement. That's been said before, but we haven't had clear rules to say when a black hole is big enough to shut down star formation in its host galaxy. It's those rules Faber and colleagues think they have supplied. They argue, they argue the mass of all the stars in the galaxy and the galactic radius form the missing variables. Galaxies with large radiuses for their mass have smaller black holes, Faber claims, because the stars are more dispersed and they are less easy in range for it to consume. For these dispersed galaxies, it takes a long time before the black hole gets large enough to release energy to heat the infalling gas sufficiently to initiate quenching. In the meantime, star formation continues. Quenching begins, Faber says, when the black hole emits an energy equal to four times the gravitational energy holding the galaxy halo gas in place. Once black hole emissions are 20 times this binding energy, the galaxy becomes fully quenched, or dead, as the more tactless put it. The theory explains our own galactic situation. The Milky Way and Andromeda Galaxy each have far more mass than all the other members of the local group combined. Yet our home is still lively with new stars just beginning to enter the quenching stage. Andromeda, of similar mass but with a black hole 50 times as massive as our sun, is almost fully quenched. That's interesting. Black holes are a really cool thing for me. Just makes me wonder, and I watched the—is uh, it Leonard Susskind? Maybe 
did a whole lecture series. I watched like three of them and they were fucking long, days upon days. It's amazing what they're coming up with and trying to use string theory to figure things out. It's pretty amazing. And if they can come up with this, because this kind of ties into, I had another podcast I recorded. I don't know how I published them or how I will publish them in a sense, but it's like the five errors of the universe. He's learning this type of stuff will let us prepare for things that could happen in the future. And it might be hopeful thinking, wishful thinking, and optimism, but that we will eventually, as a race, as a, a species, get there to be able to um, truly understand these type of phenomenon and uh, prepare our race for what might come our galaxy merging with another, our star, eventually the sun going swallowing us up, the perpetual motion of everything is going to either carry us or consume us, right? I don't believe in, you know, the fairy tales of this culture, societies, but I like at least science gives me the best understanding of reality. And I'd like to look at it this way, as bleak as it might seem. It is a thing that gets my brain going, trying to understand black holes, um, uh, wormhole theories, uh, the space, what's actually the space in between everything, and is there a quantum entanglement? The whole thing is so interesting to me. I hope people get into it as much as I do. But not to be fatalist and... Well, yeah, this is going to happen, and I don't think um, planning on some intervention of um, deities are going to help. Maybe aliens, who knows, right? We could get that. That's more plausible. But there are really interesting people in our lifetime right now who are thinking of these things and trying to figure out and leave a tool or a method for the next generations to start figuring this stuff out um it's sort of like saying you know we didn't evolve to understand these really really difficult concepts of like quantum entanglement and all this you know like physics uh, theoretical physics but we work at it we look up at the stars we wonder I, there is nothing like a starless sky Going camping in the hammock, reading a book. And I always think about things like, you know, where's the closest black hole to us? How much is it consuming? There's been some interesting movies, too. Not the old fucking black hole movie, because that's ridiculous. But um, there were things like pulsars and neutron stars and things that rotate and spin. And, like, things they see your eyes. And, like, something so thin you can't see it, but it stretches galaxies long. Just such crazy stuff out there. So I hope it fascinates people as much as it does me. This is, to me, the interesting stuff. I like the get into equations stuff, but I'm too stupid. I don't fucking know what the hell's going on. I, like I said, I watch these um, panels or college course type stuff. And I kid you not when they say they're like three, four hours long. There's... 7 11 in a series, and you just try to wrap your head around what these people are doing, and man, it's just inspiring. Um, I think science might have been my favorite or my most successful um, area in school. Although I fucking dropped out and got my GED, it was always what fascinated me. Got the help me out, that's where my highest scores came from. I had a teacher who uh, called me burnout. Was he, I caught him smoking weed. He caught me smoking weed. Um, and he accused me of cheating on the test because I got like 100. And he made, when everybody left, he made me sit in the room alone, give me another test, uh, a different one. And I got like a 98. And he started asking me questions. And I'm, he goes, he got mad because he, like, I just didn't give a fuck, you know, going to junior high. I was more interested in being an asshole, rebel. 
But when it came to it, it came to class, passed my test. That, I guess that's what all that mattered. But for him, it was like, you know, you, you got an interest in this. It could be something to think about. I think at that time, I was thinking I was more interested in psychology and how the brain works. As I've explained in some of the other podcasts I've done. So black holes, how can they kill a galaxy? Well, they'll quench it. And it's weird. It's not that they swallow everything up, right? It's that they heat up everything so it cannot form into disks to some extent. Wow. Anyway, hope everybody's healthy. I'll see everybody next time. Take care.